Hey, it's the Brian and Kendra Show, and today's going to be an interesting, you won't want to miss this episode. <laughs> I Hey, have you ever seen the opportunity that you can buy a $115,000 house for $65,000? I mean, I have. I mean, you have, yes, but in a normal person, did you, th- do you think you I could sell people your- people who have seen it. Yeah, and, and, and if you think you owed, let's say you owed $115,000 on your house- can you sell it and walk away with no debt for 65000 No. We're going to talk about it. Yes, we can. We can do it. So there are some tips. Not everyone can do that. No. And it's, um, so yeah. So today we are talking about short sales. I think what we're talking about is um, reducing the amount of hurt in the middle of hardship. Yes. That's a big deal. Cause, like that's what this is all about. Yeah. Um, we see... Everybody talks about having foreclosures. And mm-hmm. What is a foreclosure? Well, basically, a foreclosure is when um, the borrower doesn't finish making their payments and there's an outstanding debt and the bank forces their house to sh- uh, to sell, um, which means either the bank takes it or they sell it at sheriff's sale at the courthouse, so, which is a horrible event it is. for families or people, anybody really, except for the investors. But it's a horrible event. <clears throat> it's horrible for a homeowner. That's yes. what you mean. Yes. Yes. So the sheriff's, I mean the sheriff's sale, the short sale lessens the blow. It does. So um, this has all come about because we just completed a short sale. Yes. It only took us seven months. I was going I was going to ask, but I didn't have time this morning to look. Is that how long it took? That seems about right. I think we started in the end of January. So one of the things that, I, I like. I, there's so many things in my head before we even get to the real meat of it. First, I want to talk about three different things. Whenever we're talking about um, being upside down, or, I'm sorry, being um, delinquent in your payments for mm-hmm. your house. Whenever it gets to that certain point where it's so bad, something's going to happen. You have options for a short sale. Hopefully, yep. You might have an option for a deed in lieu of foreclosure, mm-hmm. where you clean your house, you get it all nice and clean, and you've moved out of it, and then you trade your um, keys for relief release yes. from this mortgage. And then there's foreclosure. They take it from you and boom, they're done. Yep. There's so, actually one more prior to that. Oh, I'm sorry. Which I haven't finished researching yet, but I have a customer in the middle of it now. They filed for a <clears throat> Oklahoma Housing Foundation Assistance ah, Grant. Wonderful. Um, the grant is for up to $30,000 in back payments. Wow. That started in covid so this this customer, for example, or you know, for example, numbers owed, you know, they bought their house for two thirty five, two twenty five. Um, they lived there ten years. COVID caught them, um, mm-hmm. lost a job, um, couldn't find another job that paid better. One thing led to another. Um, now they are now they owe two sixty five because they haven't made payments mm-hmm. and they've got late fees and. They've, you know, they actually haven't filed foreclosure. So <clears throat> the interesting point I want to make is make sure you are communicating with your lender. Yes. So sometimes the lady or the man on the other side of the phone is not empathetic. Right. Sometimes it's better just to hang up and call back. Yes. And so when you find the person that you like to talk to, <laughs> you get their name and number <laughs> extension. <laughs> So this individual said she has worked through this and um, they, I mean, they are 27 months behind on payments. Oh, ouch. And the bank says, no big deal. We're going to give you till the end of the year, September, October, November. It's four more months at a decreased payment, less than 25% of their regular payment. Okay. Or until they both get satisfactory jobs. <clears throat> they said they will give them six months to sell the home if they want to, and they're already working on short sale. Wow. To keep them out of foreclosure. The banks do not want your house. That is such a relief to hear because I think I think sometimes we think the opposite. I think we think, oh, they're ready to just take it over and gish, push mm-hmm. me out. and, and it, But really, it's so much work and it's such a hassle, and they tend to not get back the money that they would get back if you would just be able to just sell it. Just work with them, right. Yes. Um, so just quick rewind. 
I wanted to hit those other things because it's kind of the escalating scale of how bad it hurts your credit, right? Mm -hmm. So like the short sale is going to hurt your credit less than the deed in lieu of foreclosure, less than the foreclosure. foreclosure. Um, And same I assume with this grant. Yes. So the grant, obviously your credit is trashed because you have made payments. Right. Of course. Um, but it can get worse with the foreclosure. Oh, way worse. So with this issue, with with the grant issue, um, if you get the, you know, even if you don't get the grant, they will also refinance your house. Once you get stable, the bank will refinance your house so you can get back on track. So so not even not even if the grant is not even available. So number one, the refinancing. Once you get your back in the groove and you get to where you're making money, the bank will say, all right, well, we're going we're gonna to refinance the house. We're going to add payments to the deal. So, right. Um, so refinancing is a big deal. Then, then the grant, if it's still available, and then short sale and then foreclosure. So, for example, the grant piece, even if they let you refinance, probably less than a year, if you sold mm-hmm. the house, you could buy another one. Okay? That's option one. Less than a year. If you get the grant, it's probably quicker than that. If you short sell, you're probably a year, if you do everything right, from being able to rebuy a house. And if you foreclose, I mean, it's a minimum of two years. Right. More like seven. So again, lessing the hurt in the middle of your hardship. And this is super important to us. One, because we really, really love the people that we work with. Yes. We'll, we love more people than who we work with. Yeah. <laughs> we really love them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we also really, I mean, we really want to help. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many times I've heard you in the middle of negotiation say, listen, I'm just here. I want to help you. I do not want to hurt you. So if this transaction is going to cause you hurt, don't do it. When they want a list and they're going through all the options and you go, hey, 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 it sounds like you really need to keep this. What do I need to do to help you keep it? So it's not just about sales. This is about really, really helping people. And sometimes if we can get in the middle and help you in that short sale, it really, really lessens that hurt. Absolutely. So, so you're all business, but I'm all heart on this. <clears throat> so we just finished a short sale. Yeah. And that's why you want to do this. Yes. We were sitting at closing. Um, it's so, it, we actually had, we were able to work with the buyer and with the seller, which is kind of my favorite because you get to see both sides. Mm-hmm. And especially this time, Because they were both so happy. And it was so stinking exciting. I was like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Everyone was just joyful Mm -hmm. to be finished. We weren't really finished. (laughs) We just thought that (laughs) we were. We thought we were done, but no. (laughs) (laughs) But they got to keep their joy. Yeah. Well, well, me, the closer, and harassed you so we could get finished up and and get it done. But um, we could talk about that in a minute because I think that's an important part of this lesson. But legit, man, it's just... It just helps everyone to have mm-hmm. a smoother, I don't know. It just, it, it helps the heart. Yep. That's what I think. Okay. All right. So let's go. First things first, if you are behind um, on your payments, how far behind? Let's go. I, I mean, if you're... Probably if whenever you, you start in, getting behind, let's call. If you are anticipating being behind, like, I don't know if I can make my payment in two months. You need to come talk to us so we can help you make a plan. If it's <clears throat> but a short sale, you can't begin that process until you're 90 days behind, three months payments. So that's when you start your short sale process. So we can start gathering information and being ready to do it, but 90 days is the answer. Okay. So now that we know that, if that's me, what's the first step? There is a lot... There's a lot uh, of first paperwork steps. <laughs> to get put together. Okay, I thank have, you for saying it. Do you have a? Do you have a? I mean, I have a folder here. See, and I don't think just, that's all of it. Well, this is actually two different companies. I keep everything. Every company I've been with with the short sale, I keep their packet, so that if you call me and you're like, "Hey, I'm with whoever this is, Housing Concepts." I don't even know who that is, but Chase Bank, for example, I have their short sale right. packet. 
And so we know we immediately can jump in quick. I actually even have one that's a uh, uniform one. So if you're like, well, I don't even know how to get a hold of the bank. Exactly. Well, here's the information you're going to need because they all ask for the same stuff. Right. And so what are they asking for? They're going to ask for a hardship letter. <clears throat> They're going to want you to write them a letter saying why you are so behind on your payments. So yes. I'm behind on my payments because I lost my job and my spouse um, was injured and hasn't been able to work in a year. And then, I don't know, my kid broke his ankle. And so... You're gonna have to write this letter. It doesn't have to be super long and crazy, but I but I do think they need the details so that they can understand what's happening in your life that has created this hardship. Yeah. Okay. What's next? Bank statements. Bank statements. Pay stubs. Um, They want like two recent pay stubs, two recent bank statements, two years tax returns. They want your tax bill. They want your insurance verifications. Um. So it's basically the same as when you bought the house. Mm -hmm. Only then you were verifying your income and showing your worthiness to purchase it. And now you're saying same information. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> it's, I'm so sorry if Nathan had his earphones on for that. Yeah. Same information, except this time you're saying, I really can no longer afford this house and I'm in a pickle. So that's how you have to view it. It's the exact same thing that you did before, plus the hardship letter. Really right. is what it is. All right. Any outstanding big repairs on your house is the other one. Oh, yes. So Thank heat you. and air Didn't quits, sewer line it. quit, mm-hmm. roof has a hole in it. Some reason that you can't afford to fix that is another reason why you can't afford your payment or afford the house. Right. So. And man, that's legit. Yep. I, I'm thinking of houses right now that that is so real. The plumbing goes out, they can't fix it, and then, but it's really no longer habitable. Oh, I mean, I remember one of the first short sales, which I didn't know what I know now, or I probably would have saved it. Um, the air conditioner quit in the middle of summer. And she was a daycare, a home daycare. And I went, I paid for a heat and air guy to go over and check her heat and air system. They were just flat broke. Bad deal. Husband lost his job. Oh, gosh. It was a mess. She was watching kids all day. I sent the heat and air guy over and he said, well, it needs a new, whole new outside unit. And it's going to be, um, it had a home warranty on it, which that's a whole new show. Um, we could not get the home warranty people and the, like, when the, the buyers had no money. Um, and so I kept fighting with the home warranty company and, and we kind of limped the heat and air along. It finally crashed. Well, they just panicked and moved out. Right. And it foreclosed very quickly, which it was in the middle of summer. Well, and here's the thing, like, I don't, I was talking to another agent this week and I just don't know that buyers or sellers ever fully understand <clears throat> just how committed their agent really is to <clears throat> them and their, and their home ownership. I, I, did they even have a clue that they could have called you in the middle of that? I mean, they did. And I went over and got them going. Oh, I'm but, sorry. You did but say I didn't, that. See, but I'm I didn't, not clicking. But I didn't continue because they didn't. Ah, because they didn't keep calling. They didn't. They, You know, it was one of those, they, we got it fixed and then it broke again. And then they didn't want to harass me because they, you know what I mean? It's one of those, right. they felt bad. And I'm Her, like. So really what you're saying is it's okay to harass you. It's okay you. to harass me. I mean, but for real, we need to because. Yeah. Otherwise, you don't know, and then you can't continue to help. Right. Because I don't think that you ever, I cannot imagine you ever saying, oh, oh good, another short sale. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Another foreclosure. We would rather Ugh. that than a foreclosure, but we would really rather you be content and, yeah. and capable of maintaining your home. Absolutely. Okay. Um, one of the things that's on your list here is um, part of the short sale process, all the information to the um, financial institution. Right. At the same time, we need to be getting your house listed. Right. Well, but even nope. when you send all that information in, you need to pick your agent at that point. Yes. Okay. I'm getting there. Good. I want to say it because this is what I love. I love, 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 love the closing agent that assisted us on this short sale. I don't know how many times in emails and text and phone conversations she said, this was her first one. And she said, I'm so glad it's you guys because I know you've done these before and I know you know what you're doing. And I am so glad to learn how to do this with you. So um, I think she meant you probably, (laughs) although she was stuck talking to me the whole time. (laughs) But there's so much value in that because if your agent is not versed in these, and and I was thinking about it in this too. I did plenty of my own before I started working with you, but I am so out of practice Oh, I was out of practice. I really needed, I, I absolutely needed you mm. on this one. And I, you know, I don't like saying that. <laughs> well, obviously you finished it. So I, I needed you. We'll talk about that later. Uh, no, but legit, I, 
the uh, the value of a of a really seasoned and capable and experienced realtor in any transaction is huge. But on something of this nature that is so technical and so detailed and so it is such a fight. You guys would not believe the amount of emails the last week that I had back and forth and and me pushing and saying, no, this is required. If we didn't do this, we couldn't sell. And 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 that stinking company saying, well, I don't care. We're not paying it. I, you got to have somebody that's going to go to bat for you. Mm-hmm. And and so the value of that seasoned, experienced agent is so important. So, yes. Yep. I know I'm a little worked up. Yeah, I know. I just... I, I mean, just, calm down now. I remember just reviewing the closing statement while I was in Dallas, and I thought, who, what imbecile cannot see that this is the same thing? Just move the numbers around. Exactly. You know... It, it was so silly, <clears throat> not regardless. The, it wasn't the closer. It was no, just, not the closer. It, the the, company, was the was company was just... It's like, this $24 too, is holding us up, and I'm like, $24 is... Like they were too nearsighted or something. Like yeah. it was just anyway. Um, I let them borrow my glasses and we got it finished. But definitely, 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 we say this all the time anyway. You want to get um, the best realtor for you, but but we're telling you, make sure ask those questions. Mm-hmm. Have you done short sales? How long? You might want to ask how long it's been. Although, um, I'd be yeah. really if you're in the middle of these with another agent and they're not sure what to do, just have them call us. Tell your agent that we're happy to assist yep. them. Yep. We're not going to hold their hand to do everything, but we're going to make sure we give them all the tools that they need yep. so that they can do this successfully for you. Yes, we want we want what's best for people. Okay, I'm um, receiving and submitting offers. This part is so this is what triggers a booger. This is what triggers the short sale. It is, but it's like the hardest part. I swear. Right. So if you have a hundred and fifteen thousand dollar house and you're trying to get house offers, and the house is um, had some major issues. And the market dropped, and it's now worth sixty-five thousand. How do you convince people to make offers for sixty-five thousand? Like, just make an offer. Like, it doesn't matter. It's offer ten thousand so dollars. Mm-hmm. They won't. The offer could be anything. So right. sometimes my goal is I just call investors say I need you to make an offer. Why well, I'm not interested in the house. At what number would you be interested in the house? Like this one. Well, right. 45000 Great. Let's, Let's put it in writing. Well, I'm just not sure. How about forty-two? I don't care what your offer is. Just make it. Right. And if you get it, awesome. And if you don't, you have helped a family start the short sale. I want to rewind you. One of the hardest parts, I think, is that so many times we have to list it at this elevated price. Yep. And I think that's why it's hard to get the offers in. Mm-hmm. Because the elevated price is probably not the realistic sales price. We right. know it's not. But sometimes it's the same thing that we tell a seller, don't list so high that people won't make an offer. And this is one of the situations where we're required to list so high. Nobody wants to make the offer, right. make the stinking offer. Right. And then sometimes they'll let us start dropping it. But then we get, then it's really tricky then because yeah. if we drop the price to 70000 and it appraises for eighty. Now we look like big liars, like they won't take it. Well, they told right. you know, it's... Oh, it's hard. It's, and that happened uh, on this one. We were able to um, get it under contract at a value that, that the bank approved. Mm-hmm. Everybody approved, everybody approved, everybody approved. Whenever we get halfway through the sale, they say, nah. I guess whenever they finally... They'd already approved it once, but then they go back mm-hmm. and they reapprove. And they said, no, we want more money. Yeah. And everybody panicked. It was horrible. And I don't know what you did. You worked some kind of magic on that. It, Again, lots of phone calls. The right realtor. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. So that's whenever the offer. So that offer triggers an appraisal. How many? One or two? Uh, depends. This one only required one, but most sometimes if it's a if it's really close, they'll just go order another appraisal to verify. Okay, so it triggers the appraisal from that point. The um, the mortgage company for the seller because they're not a foreclosure. Right. So that mortgage company is saying, we're going to accept this amount of money of an offer. So if the offer met it, awesome, you're great, ready to go. Mm -hmm. If the offer did not meet it, they can either elevate or be released. Yes. And then we start over. Right. And that's that's what happened with this, isn't it? It actually it had it well, it had a second mortgage with COVID that was actually um forgivable. But we had to call to verify all that. Gotcha. That's all it was. So they like, oh, we gotta we gotta get this one re-. their language was we need to get this other secondary mortgage paid or released. And we're like, 
that's another $15,000. How do we right. do that? Oh, this is ridiculous. So after we got through the mess, we figured out, oh, it's a forgivable one in time of hardship. And so they just released it. After we sent them, we sent them all the same short sale paperwork and they just released it. Okay. So, so while we're negotiating with the lenders, how long is this going to take? Oh, it could take a long time. So this contract itself, I think we... I, I thought we started at the end of January. Well, I don't think... I think we started the process then because we had another offer first. Oh, yes. And then... That's when they approved the short sale and then that guy backed out. Right. So then our another... I think our, our another buyer, our another buyer oh, came another in. <laughs> yeah. Our next buyer comes in. Which, I think they must have come in around May. Maybe. But the first... Let's go back to that one. The first buyer helped us to establish the appraised value. Yes, we're so thankful. And the bank... So how how is how can a bank lose $50,000 on a bank on a home? Well, you pay mortgage insurance and right. the government. Are these a bunch of these are government-backed right. loans, which insure the lender so they can't lose very much money? This had been an FHA. So that's why this one... That's why they're willing to just take it mm-hmm. on the chin. Well, they didn't. We did. <laughs> <laughs> The insurance company yes. um, assisted. Okay. All right. So this can take weeks, months. Um, so I've seen yes. really fast ones mm-hmm. working with you. Yep. And I've had another one that was like literally six months long, same contract. It was absolutely horrendous. So I think the important part right now for a buyer and for the seller mm-hmm. is just be patient. So bless her heart, this buyer was kind of anxious, mm-hmm. rightfully so. But it, because the process is so hard to explain, because it's so hard to understand, because there's so many variables, it can make a buyer very, very, very uncomfortable. Yes. We could put you in a bad spot. If you put all your eggs in this basket, oh, it's going to happen. And then the bank's like, Bob, I need $700 more. What? But I'm thinking back even to the ones that we had, the ones on Briarwood. Um, I think they might have been homeless for a short minute. I'm trying to remember because that turned out so crazy. Oh, yeah. Did they end up homeless? Oh, they were. Oh, yeah, they sure did. I think they did because we sold their house in order for them to buy this house. Yes. And then the short sale took longer than expected, of course. Yeah. A lot of fight, but we got her done. Yeah. But I think they ended up being homeless for first, a time. Did, yeah. And so, so for the buyer, just know it's not going to be an easy process. Have another plan ready. Mm-hmm. But know that we're going to do our best to get it right. done. Because generally, it's either the house you want, which the one there was, they wanted that house. Yes. And then sometimes it's it's a great deal. We want and the house. still, man, I love that they're, like this one, the one that was homeless for yeah. a short time. Like, I, I every time I see their post, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so perfect. Yeah. It was so perfect. And this one, so perfect. Yeah. I am so happy for them. It It's amazing that it all came together. It's so cool. Okay, so negotiation with the lender can take quite a long, quite a long time. It could take quite a while. <laughs> quite a while. <laughs> so just be ready for that. Be patient with us. We're going to work with it, and we'll keep you as up-to-date as we can. But there's a lot of hurry up and wait. There's a lot of us submitting something, and then we wait, and then we wait, and then we prompt, and then we wait. And then it gets kind of crazy, mm-hmm. and we, man, we jump, 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 and then we wait. Mm-hmm. So just know that's what's going to go. Okay, closing the sale. <sighs> closing the sale. Yeah. <clears throat> they just kept kicking the door back open. <laughs> so we, so this time, I tried to submit everything in advance, and maybe I did. Maybe I missed a document. I, maybe I missed something. I'm not sure. Regardless, they said we don't need to. I think they told you on the phone we don't need to approve it. Go ahead, get it closed. We're happy. Yes. Let's go. So we closed that little puppy, and everybody was so happy. And I mean, I felt like hugging everybody, and it yeah. was all exciting. I didn't let you go to closing because it was so <laughs> great. Um, and then Monday. We get our, we start getting lit up on our emails. Um, we need this. We need this. We need this. And most of it I already had because okay. that's what we'd already submitted. So I resubmitted, and then they said, "No, your settlement statement's wrong." I'm like, "The heck it is, buddy." <laughs> we sent it to you a week ago. You didn't look at it till now. <laughs> so we had to. Um, man, bless her heart. That that closer had to really do some magic mm-hmm. to make everything fit and make it work so that we can get it done. May I, I'm like, I don't know how in the world to avoid that in the future because I did everything I could mm-hmm. to avoid it this time. Patience. So I guess I guess the whole moral of the story is one more time. It ain't over till it's over. Right. And I and again, I think I, I have a lot of thoughts. It ain't over till it's over. Right. So just know next time, it might be that your funds pass. Like you might have traded funds. Um, buyer give their funds to the closing agent. 
Um, if seller has to bring money to the table, they might have to. Generally, the, the seller has to be zeroed. Zero. They cannot. either have to bring money or it's got to be zeroed. Right. It cannot be that they get money back. They right. are not allowed to take any proceeds, which makes sense because they're not paying off their whole mortgage in a sense. So I think the moral of that part is just, it might be three, four, five days after closing before they finally approve it, and mm-hmm. boom, you get to move in. I think right. that's probably the way it's supposed to be. But I've not seen one like that before. I, that, that was new to me. This one was new. Like, we submitted all the documents 72 hours in advance so they could review them all so we could correct them so it would be done when it's done. But <clears throat> I, I have so they, many things in my mind that I'm not going to say about it, but it I was not happy with them. It doesn't make sense to me. No, it does not make sense. <laughs> it didn't make sense. So... And it was little. It was less than hundreds of dollars holding up a $65,000 transaction. So dumb. And all the money's there. And you know what it came out to be? It was a problem because there had been a title defect, and that money was because we had to correct the title defect. There was no way the seller could have known because it was something that had been errantly Mm -hmm. handled at their closing. Yep. it was absolutely ridiculous. The seller couldn't. I mean, the seller didn't have the money to pay for it. The buyer, they didn't even know. We didn't even tell them. It's not their problem. But. The lender wouldn't pay it. It was just a stupid It was a mess. mess. It was a mess. Anyway, we got it done. Okay, so we've got like two minutes left. And and I know that that's probably because I keep dwelling on the part about, I just, but I want people to know, like if you were in this spot, like this is mm-hmm. so serious to me. If you were in that spot, let us try to help you. Yep. And, and I'll tell you what, the hardest part about it is if we can't and then like, don't think I go home and go to bed easy that night. Like no. that's the hardest part. Yep. We've got one right now, one of our customers, and and that 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 property keeps me up. Dog on it, it does. So just know we want to do everything that we can to help you to not be in that position. If mm-hmm. we can help you to get out of it in a way that preserves whatever is left of your credit, we want to do that. Right. That's what we want to do. Okay. So do you have anything that you want to hit and like? I, well, Probably. there's other things that pop up that are just com- complicated. So you're like, well, I got 18 other judgments on top of my loan. That's okay. We can negotiate all of those away. They may not go off your name, but they we can get them off the house. That's not a big deal. I mean, it's just lots of phone calls. It's not easy. It won't it's be short. Easy. You, it's work. No, it's it a, should be world's longest sales. It's a job. And if you lose money, so you're going to get a 1099 at the end of this transaction because you made money. It doesn't feel like you made money, but you didn't have to come up with it. So they send you a 1099, which is an income statement. You need to make sure you have a really good accountant that knows the law because the law says two of the last five years, any income made on your home property is not taxable. If you file that wrong, you will, they, will, they will gladly take your taxes. So that's another big one. So yeah, nonetheless, thanks for listening. Um, short sales are a big deal. They are a great tool. Please call us. Please call us early. Um, we know judgmental. We have friends, family that Absolutely. have been through these. Um, someday I might get to go through one. You never know. I just want you to know it's an option, and we want to be there to help you. Absolutely. And so. we really, I mean, I'm so thankful we got to help these people. Yeah. Like, Both they're going to be little heart signs in my phone for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this is the Brian Kinder Show. Don't hesitate to call us, 580-334-2303. 580-216-0090. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time.